Hey guys, uh, this video is about Mr. Shower's mole lab. What you guys are going to be doing is determining the representative particles of each one of these eight samples here. Some are ionic compounds, some are elements, some are molecules. Now, using your mole map, okay, you're going to convert from grams of a substance all the way over to representative particles. And as we discussed in class, there's three kinds of representative particles. There's atoms, which are elements. There's formula units, AKA funds for ionic compounds. And there's molecules, which are for molecular compounds, which are basically two or more nonmetals. Okay, so on your data sheet, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to write down the information I give you right now in your column. So I'm going to go over uh, the first column, substance formula, the second column, mass of sample and bottle, and the third column, mass of empty bottle, right now. You're gonna do mass of substance, molar mass of compound, and the answer, which is the number of representative particles, or R dot P dot, in the sample, okay? Now, the first thing you need to know is the mass of the empty bottle, okay? So I'm gonna put this on the balance, and the mass of the empty bottle is 14.52, okay? So in that column, it's the third column over, you write down 14.52, and that's for the whole entire column for each sample, okay? Because each plastic container weighs 14.52, and there's eight of them. Okay, we're gonna use this to subtract from the mass we get from the entire sample in the container. All right, the first substance, okay, substance formula is sodium nitrite. Okay, so write down sodium nitrite. Okay, then you're gonna to have to write the formula for sodium nitrite, all right? Now let's weigh this. This is the second column, mass of sample and bottle. So I'm gonna put this on the balance and let's determine the mass of it. Okay, it is 52.23 grams, 52.23. Okay, now, just to show you on the first example, 52.23 is your starting mass. So you're gonna start right here. Then in the yellow is your conversion factor you're gonna use. Then over here, again, is the other conversion factor that you're gonna to use to get representative particles. Now, don't forget, the first conversion factor here has molar mass, so you're gonna to have to have the formula for this one correctly. If you do not, you're gonna have the wrong molar mass and you're gonna end up outputting the wrong answer. So naming is very important in moles and going forward. Okay, so that's how you basically do the first one. Number two, the name of it is ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrate. And this has a mass of 35.47, okay? Number three is potassium phosphate, potassium phosphate. And this has a mass of 27.02. Okay, number four is strontium chloride. Strontium chloride. And this has a mass of 75.19. 75.19. Okay, number five is copper two sulfate. Copper two sulfate. And this has a mass of 46.16. 46.16. Okay, number six is water. Number six is water. The mass of number six is 
43.85. Okay, number seven is magnesium metal. Magnesium metal. This has a mass of 16.80. Okay, the last substance is zinc metal. Okay, again, zinc metal. And this has a mass of 54.29, 54.29. Okay, now again, what you have to do is you have to take the mass of sample and bottle, subtract it from the mass of the empty bottle, which is 14.52. And that's going to give you the mass of substance right here. And you want to convert all eight representative particles using those two conversion factors and make sure you label it correctly. Okay. Um, now, if you're going to ask about significant figures, round everything to two decimal points. Okay. So that's how you do it. Okay, and make sure your formula, formulas are correct. Check them all. Make sure they're accurately crisscrossed. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right molar mass. Okay, and remember, molar mass is a column I want to look at. So I have my molar masses finished, and I'm going to go check all your molar masses. Okay, guys, that's it.